Now I'm recording. I might do some edits here, I'm not totally sure. But, uh, welcome to Senpai Academy. Uh, here we go, this is the premiere class, and uh, I'll just teach you the shit that I know. So, uh, this is the opening screen that you'll usually get uh, when you have, uh, as you can see, I have many previous videos that I've worked on. Uh, so I can click up and open like any one of these right away. I can go to open project if I want to open a different project You would have to search through your uh, file explorer or you could start a new project Which is going to be what what I'm going to be doing this time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a new project. All right now uh, th There's some settings that you can do on here and I don't I don't really mess with this at all. I pretty much just leave it the same. Everything here looks fine to me. I guess if you wanted it to display differently, like if you wanted frames, you could do that. Uh, but this is going to be called testing for Sen Senpai Academy. Perfect. <laughs> all right, cool. So this is what my timeline looks like. Uh, yours might look a little bit different. I tend to not change my shit very much from the default. Uh, but, uh, okay, so this top right area is your preview. Uh, this is the timeline. So this is where you like drag and drop clips and like order them and do like all the heavy work. And then it like previews up in here. Uh, this is like the effect area where I uh, manage effects. This is also the effect area where you pick the effect to put on your clip. Uh, and then this is like a storage area that compiles like all the different clips that you've already put. And this is where you would uh, drag and drop your clips in order to uh, put them into your project. So uh, let me find something. Okay, I will do, uh, yes, yes, I will do the, the import of uh, Sesame Street Jack Black with an octagon, because I already have that clip pulled up. Now you see what happened? Uh, normally I make 1080p videos, but when I imported the footage, it automatically imported it into this 4x3 format. So it's different. So how do you fix that? I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know how to manually fix this. I think it might be like in project settings or something. So uh, I, I'm just gonna control Z or control Z, uh, you probably use Z, uh, twice. And I'm gonna find a clip of the footage, of footage that I want to use for, uh, convenience so I'm gonna throw up uh, flying shark versus uh, ps4 voice commands you can also drag and drop directly into the timeline and it'll show up right here so there boom now I have a crisp 1080p footage right here and then if I want to add in the jack black octagon boom uh, the jack black octagon is uh, applied into its regular uh, into its regular format. Now let's say that I want to make the Jack Black octagon bigger. Uh, so what I do is I go into the effect area and then I hold and I kind of drag my mouse. I drag my mouse to the right in order to scale it up. Now you can also type it in manually. So I could type in 150 and that would scale it up to size. So there. Now I got uh, Jack Black right up here with this octagon sesame street clip over the flying shark versus ps4 commands video uh, you can also do a few other changes uh, let's say i don't want this on the center screen well you can go to position and you can like click and drag and this time i'm dragging it to the left and boom it automatically just moves the project to the left 
I can also do it to the right if I want. And boom, it's right there. Now, let's say that I want the footage to move from the left to the right. In that case, what I will do is I will get at the like the very starting point of the clip. I will press this button right here. Uh, that creates a keyframe for that exact frame. And then I go to the point, I like drag it across here, uh, because this is essentially like a summary of that entire specific clip. So I'm going to drag it across here. I'm going to place, actually I'm not even going to place another keyframe, because if I just move it, it automatically creates another keyframe. So you don't even need to manually place keyframes, you can just drag and drop your timer to a different location that you want. Uh, now this can be done with other things too. If I want the scale to change, if I want the video to really zoom in, which is uh, one of my personal favorite things to do, then I can zoom in like that. Boom. It's like that. Now maybe I want it to look real nice. I can have it zoom in faster. Or maybe I want to drag it out. I can make the zoom in slower. You can uh, you can click and drag the keyframes at any point and uh, move them to your liking. Uh, but if that's not enough for you, uh, you can like manually press the keys on the keyboard. Uh, and I'll go ahead and I'll no I'll I'll mm, okay I'll remove that keyframe and I will place another keyframe right here by zooming in. So now you've got like, uh huh. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna like zoom out. Oh, um, actually, a healthy thing to do right here is the reset parameter button. Let's say that you want to change something to default settings. You can do it right here with that button. So it automatically just reverted it to the original settings that it started with. So if I wanted it to start at its original 100, I can do that. And then we've got the clip right Find here. Find an octagon. How, Elmo? How? Oh, okay. So that actually, uh, I actually have three keyframes right there. I didn't even realize that. Um, so, okay. If you uh, are struggling with that, uh, maybe there's not enough space to view it you can zoom in by like clicking and dragging this little timeline thing. So that's that's actually pretty cool. How Elmo how? But I kind of like that. I'm going to I'm going to move this back just a little bit right here. How Elmo how? Yeah, now that looked a little bit more natural. So you might want to play around with that a little bit. But that's generally like what you do right there. Uh okay. Now, maybe I don't like the flying shark uh, you know what, I'm gonna cut this, uh, I'm just gonna remove this clip entirely right now, so, uh, I will press the delete key, and it automatically just removes the footage from there. Uh, I'm gonna control Z real quick, and if I want, uh, okay, it's called the, the razor tool now, not the blade tool. Uh, when I learned it, it was called the blade tool, and it was like the B key, now it's the C key. For cut I guess so you can cut the footage into a uh, look what it did it automatically cut the video and the audio of the clip now let's say that you don't want that maybe you just want to cut the video or the audio in that case you have to right click and then you have to go to unlink and then now uh, the clip will move separately from uh, the video and audio so, I'm going to cut the video, and delete that, and now you only have this portion of the video right there. So that's, that's just a helpful little thing that you can do right there. I, uh, I like that very much. If I'm going too fast, uh, feel free to 
let me know and I can uh, go over anything that you need in uh, more detail. That's fine. It's fine right now. Gotcha. Yeah, you're also welcome to interject at any point if you do have any questions. Uh, okay. Uh, another thing that you can do is uh, mess with the audio a little bit. So let's see here. PlayStation! PlayStation! So you can hear like there's a little bit of background noise right there. Uh, so what I do for background noise, and uh, I know this isn't perfect, uh, I use the denoise effect. I know that there's a different uh, noise removal effect that I think is probably more recent. But I don't, I don't remember where to find it. Uh, I use denoise personally; it works just fine for me. So uh, I use, so I, uh, so yeah, uh, these arrows right here sort uh, the different uh, effects that you can have. So I wanted the audio effects, noise reduction slash restoration, and then I use denoise. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag that effect onto the audio of the flying shark clip. So then we've got, now you can only hear it a little bit, but uh, it's definitely there. And it like just automatically uh, changes up the noise levels. Um, I guess the, the noise wasn't detected all that much, but you could hear a difference. Um, It just controls that it's like that. So yeah, uh, there is a noticeable difference. Uh, I find it very useful, and uh, if you don't feel like it's doing a good enough job of removing the noise, you can apply it multiple times. So if I want to apply, apply it, say, three times, uh, just drag and drop three times. <laughs> So that uh, definitely uh, cleared out the noise, but it also made... Uh... No, actually it's fine. Uh, sometimes it'll make uh, other portions or like the entire audio quieter. Uh, now, how do I counteract that? Uh, because sometimes, uh, recently I've had moments where uh, the audio is too quiet, like my voice is too quiet when I do the recording. Uh, especially like after noise removal. So in that case, I right click the audio, I go to audio gain, and then what I do is I click on normalize max peak to zero decibels. I assume that's what it is, decibels. Uh, and then I press okay. And now it just made everything louder. PlayStation. PlayStation. So yeah, uh, the zero decibels I feel is the perfect, uh, and you want to be on normalized max peak too for that. I feel like that's the perfect volume for YouTube or anything on the internet. It's just like perfectly balanced, as everything should be, just like Thanos said. Uh, you can also adjust your volume. Maybe you think it's too loud. Uh, maybe, ooh. Maybe you got some sweet ass background music that you'd like to play, but but the music is too loud. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw up uh, this uh, video game song. I'm gonna unlink it. I'm gonna cut it and just listen to this We're for a second. Come back. <laughs> That volume is way too loud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to audio gain, and then I'm going to go to adjust gain by. You can also set gain too, if you just want to. Let's say that I want to set it to negative 30. I can do that. It'll come back. <laughs> and then if I want to set it to zero again or let's say I want to set it to negative 10 maybe that's maybe I think that's too quiet 
And then I'm like, oh, that's that's not that's not good enough. Uh, in that case, you, what you can do is you can just adjust game by, and you can do it like minus five or minus ten, and it automatically changes the gain. Uh, so now it would be minus twenty. So here it's we go. <laughs> and then you have the background music well, with the clip, and it's like it's pretty well it's mashed up good. actually. So there you go. That's uh, that's how I add like every background music ever. <laughs> um, and then uh, if you want to make adjustments at the edges of your clips for like fading purposes, you can do that. Uh, so what I do is I right click at the very edge right here. Uh, you'll have like this little hover icon for it, which implies like it's prob it's asking you like, do you want to drag your clip? And move it do you want do you want to do a cut this way which you can you can like cut it that way uh, you can like drag it to a specific point which I find is like a lot faster to deal with but uh, you can only do it at the edges you can't do it from the middle which is like where the blade comes in so then if you want to blade and then you want to drag it you can drag it and then you just have a clip right here perfect uh, on top of that, uh, you can uh, right click, you can do apply default transitions. And look at this shit right here. It's a fade. It's a fade. Fades are wonderful. Fades are great. Uh, so this is an audio fade right here. I can click and I can left click and drag and I can make the fade longer or I can make the fade shorter. Uh, you can also change the type of fade i believe under audio transitions and right now the default is constant power but if i want to i can make it exponential fade so it changes the type of fade uh, i can do constant gain and we'll see how different this looks uh, okay, let's try constant power again, the default. So yeah, you can experiment with this to your liking. I usually just stick with constant power, the default. I uh, never really find a need to choose the other fades. Um, oh yeah, right, this is an audio fade. So it's only changing the audio. So uh, let me actually play the audio fade then. I'm being dumb. Fuck yourself. Okay, so that's a constant power. Now this is constant gain. You fuck yourself. And then this is exponential fade. You fuck yourself. I actually really like the sound of exponential fade. I might, I might want to start using that if I'm not too lazy. Uh, and you can also go to video transitions, and. You'll probably want to go to fade if I can. Oh, it's under dissolve. It's under dissolve. So it's doing the cross dissolve. Uh, let me make that a match up with exponential fade. Okay, so this is cross dissolve right here. But you can also switch it. Maybe I want to do additive dissolve. That was that was kind of weird. Uh, you can do dip to black. You, fuck yourself. you can also do dip to white. You, fuck yourself. Which uh, like you, makes it flash white. So that might be a transition effect that you might be interested in trying out. Uh, if you're trying to do something a little bit fancier. We got film dissolve right here. You, fuck yourself. Wait, what? Oh, that's just like a, that's just a cut. Okay. Uh, morph cut. You fuck yourself. Oh, can't apply to a single clip. Uh, so some, uh, transition clips require like the clips to be next to each other. So there has to be two clips involved for a transition. So, uh, you can apply this fade tactic 
to multiple clips. So we'll try the morph cut and we'll see if I can do it to both right here. Let's see what happens right here. Oh, oh shit. Uh, okay, it's still analyzing it. So maybe I'll uh, control Z and uh, just do the regular cross dissolve. Oh, yeah, perfect. So this is a cross dissolve right here with both clips interconnected. It shows like both features of the clips, um, which is uh, pretty typical. Uh, if you want to do the dip to black, you can do the dip to black. So uh, the difference might be more noticeable uh, depending on like if you have anything going on in the background or if you have the two clips next to each other. So it's your preference whether you want to do like a cross dissolve or a dip to black during your transition. Uh, another thing, uh, when you copy and paste footage, this is very important to keep in mind. Let's say that I want to copy this clip, this clip of flying shark saying go fuck yourself, but I want to put it earlier in the clip. What happens when I do the control C and then control V for paste? Look at that shit. It automatically puts it on V1A1. So uh, that's just important to keep in mind. It essentially replaced the existing footage that I already had. And I can like drag it and bring it back. But if I want to like clip it and then put it over it as like part of an edit. Uh, it's going to make the portion of the footage that it covered disappear and you have to like bring it back. So it's a little bit of a nuisance, but uh, you can work with that. Uh, I'm just throwing footage right here. <laughs> I was just experimenting right there, just seeing like what would happen. Uh, so yeah, when you drag and drop, you can put it onto any row. But when it comes to uh, cop copying and pasting, I want to copy and paste this shit. Look at that! It just it just completely undid everything else that I already did. So uh, yeah, that's very important to keep in mind. I would. I strongly suggest avoiding cutting, uh, copying and pasting clips, or uh, I would avoid leaving clips on the V1A1 area of the timeline. Uh, okay, okay, this is getting a little messy. Uh, let's uh, let's see here. Uh, let me look into my uh, downloaded footage. Oh, oh, perfect. Okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab this. And uh, I'm also going to grab picture. Because you can also like use pictures too. Uh, we'll take we'll take this picture that I used for uh, one of my thumbnail backgrounds. So uh, yeah, the same thing goes with pictures. You can import pictures real easily, um, and yeah, the pictures will show at their original scale. So if I wanted to zoom in, I can like zoom in right there uh there's a there's a thing right here uh can you see my mouse yes okay cool uh so uh right here there's a little logo so what i want to do is i want to just drag it up and boom it's gone look at that it's beautiful now let's say let's say okay i want i want to throw tyler one up here uh, and be in the avatar universe 
Well, guess what? I can have Tyler 1 be in the Avatar universe very easily with green screens. Uh, so, uh, in order to use a green screen, what you gotta do is you gotta go to Video Effects, then you gotta go to Keying, and then you go with Ultra Key. Ultra Key is your chroma key essentially and you can drag it and implement it on top of the tyler one green screen video oh but it didn't change anything well that's because you need to change the color that it's keying out so i go ahead and i just use this little eyedropper tool and i implement it on the green and look at that instant green screen uh, if you want to change your settings a little bit, maybe you think that it's a little too iffy, you can change up the transparency of it. If you want to clean it up a little bit, you can uh, mess with that a little bit. You can, uh, you can uh, give it a little bit of a feather, I believe. Um... Ooh, spill suppression. You could like mess with like the desaturation of the color. Uh, you can mess with the range, like how far does it go? Uh, the spill, which doesn't seem to be changing anything. So I'm I'm just gonna revert all these back to their original settings uh mat okay mat cleanup this is actually what i was looking for right here uh if you want it tighter or looser uh you can change the choke so if i want the choke you can see that it kind of like cuts his arm off a little bit right there if i want to soften it uh this essentially applies a little bit of a blur around the green screen you can do that too uh contrast i don't i don't really see what that's doing uh and yeah, I don't really see the change for midpoint, but uh, you might want to change up the soften if you want to add a blur, and you might want to change up the choke if you want to loosen it or tighten it. Maybe the green screen that, that was recorded isn't exactly perfect. You can mess with it manually. Um, but yeah, now you have a beautiful section right there. I'm actually going to throw in some background music because I feel like this warrants some background music. Uh, and I'm gonna change the audio gain. We're gonna do minus 20, and we'll just play this uh, beautiful clip. Only, it's only game. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just needed to see the fruits of my labor for a moment. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's very easy to make a high quality meme like that in Premiere. Um, another thing that you can do is, uh, masking. So, masking... I have a love-hate relationship with masking. Uh, masking has brought me so many great memes, but it takes a while. So, uh, here's a way that you can do masking. Uh, so basically under any video, you will see opacity in, first off, you can like change the opacity itself of it. So if you want him to like, <laughs> if you want Tyler one to just like kind of fade and disappear into the background, you can do that. And you can also apply the same effect. So. I can have him uh, essentially disappear at the end of this clip. Uh, so let's say that Tyler One is vanishing. Only, it's only game. <laughs> yeah, you can have uh, Tyler One yeah. fade out, but you can also do the reverse. You can have him fade in. And you saw how I just moved the clips and uh, switched them to the other side. So this will be Tyler One vanishing out of thin or uh, appearing appearing out of nowhere out of thin air only, it's only game. <laughs> uh, and you can also uh let's say that i want to go to the point where he's summoned only, it's, it's only... and maybe i want the 
introduction to be faster. It's only game. <laughs> or maybe maybe I want it to be even faster than that. Let's see what happens right here. It's only game. See, that was essentially like a fade right there. Whereas if you want the clip to drag out and you want to see transparent Tyler one, you can make it longer. So it really, it's just a style preference of choice, but it's definitely something that I recommend uh, experimenting with. Uh, but in addition to that, you can also create a mask. So there's three types of masks that you can make. You can do the ellipse mask. So it's anything like circular. Whoa, look at that. It's a mask that's already made for me. And I can just throw it right here if I want to. <laughs> Uh, and then you can also, uh, essentially do the same effect if I want. If I want to, if I want to summon Tyler One's head and just his head, I can do that. Uh, so we're, we're going to see what that looks like real quick. It's only game. <laughs> so it's not perfect. Um, first off, I think that, uh, I need to move the mask so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete that extra keyframe actually I'm gonna delete that too okay uh, and what I do is I normally like manually follow where he's at so let's say that I want him to spawn right there but then he, he moved his head oh no what do I do? Well, you go to the point where like he's starting to move his head. Uh, and then I press and I keyframe. And then, uh, uh, he moved his head. What do I do? Well, uh, actually, shit, it's gotta be on max, ma mask path. Uh, that's opacity. Okay, so we're gonna create a path for the mask. And I'm gonna move it. Uh, I'm gonna move the mask. If I, if I can move it, uh, I thought. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you actually have to click up here to move it. Boom. So now you have a mask that moves along with his head, and I can like move it again right here. Automatic new keyframe. You have to keep that in mind if you uh, if you want like a faster transition or a slower transition because this is a slower transition. If you wanted it to stay the same, you could copy and paste that keyframe into the frame that you want. So I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna. Hmm, I can't paste it. Why is that? Uh, copy it and I'm gonna. Usually I'm able to copy and paste keyframes like that. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. But it's not. So just just something to keep in mind, I guess. Um, can I duplicate it? No, I don't know. Uh, I've been able to copy and paste keyframes before, no problem. I don't know why it's not letting me do it right now. Maybe Maybe it's something specific to do with the mask feature. Okay. Now, clearly his head got bigger. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this part of the mask right here. And then you're gonna see, you're gonna see that uh, that part of the, the mask has changed to kind of shape around his head. That's pretty good. I like that. I like that. And now, now I'm just kind of like modifying the mask as the head goes on. Uh, you can also use this if you want to. Uh, you know what? I'm not even sure what that does really. Uh, oh, okay. So it like it like changes the mask and you can make it like blurrier if you want which I don't want to do that so I'm gonna put it back there
Ooh. Okay. We're gonna move this up. I'm gonna add another keyframe right here because that's a that's a quick movement. And then he kind of like jolts back down. So then I'm gonna move it back down here. And I'm gonna close the mask a little bit to hide some of the other areas. All right. And now let's see what happens with our new clip. Only, it's only game. <laughs> I'd say that's pretty good. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> I want to save that. So I'm just going to implement another Tyler one green screen and I'm going to do the same thing. The ultra key and then the eyedropper and we're gonna mess around with the other masks. So this is the rectangular mask uh, and it just it's like the same as the ellipse. Uh, but look at this. Uh, I have to move corner by corner. So instead of it being a perfect circle all the time, it is not a perfect square or a perfect rectangle all the time. Uh, so you can mess with that. You can also press on the middle when it has the plus icon and look at that Ooh, i added it an additional corner it is no longer a four shaped uh shape a four-sided shape uh it is now a, a shape with many sides and many corners but if you're looking to be more accurate it you do have to manage uh more of these sides but you can get like a more precise mask if you want to do something like this. Uh, I still think it's easier, uh, especially if you have a picture, to just like cut it out in Photoshop. But if you're looking to like cut out a video, uh, this can be your best friend. And uh, notice that when I move the mask, it does not move Tyler One's head. Okay, so if I want to keep the mask, but I want to move the position, I have to actually move it on the position meter right here. Okay, and then uh, I can do something like this. I can move it from here to here. Uh huh. I can I can do something like that. So let's see what happens. <laughs> All right, you might have seen it like skip and repeat a little bit. Uh, I assure you that that was purely just a previewing issue with Premiere. Uh, it was trying to prepare like the preview footage. Um, if you find that your footage is going too slow, you can change it to like a quarter. You can change it to a half. You can change it to a full. Uh, full shows you like the full quality of the video, uh, but the playback speed might be, if your device is not supportive of full playback, you might need a quarter playback. Uh, let me see, what else? Um, you can also, okay, so I'm going to remove that mask, and I'm going to switch it to the free draw mask. So with the free draw mask, basically you just create your own shape. Boom. And there, you have your own shape to work with right here. Uh, so it's, it's much more similar to like the rectangular one, except when uh, giving a, a starting point, you make your own starting point. And this is kind of helpful because uh, when you have the original rectangle, uh, it just, like, when you click on it, it gives you a point to work with. And you have to kind of, like, start at that point. And you, then you have to move it. But you don't have to move it with, uh... See, like this. How, like, Tyler1 only shows up at that uh, starting point. So you have to kind of like change that manually. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for green screens and masking. 
Um, I definitely like that. Okay. <laughs> Let's see here. What else? Uh, I'm trying to think, because there's probably other things that I want to mess with too, but I can't think of anything actually. I'm uh, kind of stumped right now. Uh, huh. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? Actually, uh, okay, let's uh, keep this audio right here with the music, and uh, I will show you text on screen. So you go to the type tool, you click on, you click and drag a box. You click and drag a box because if you click and then just press it, then it makes a real small box. And if you want a small box, you could have a small box, and then the small box expands right here. Uh, so I'm gonna call this Minecraft Tutorial uh, 1.1 1. 1. 1.2 Minecraft Tutorial 1.2 right here, uh, and I can click and drag that text right there, and you see how the text box is only uh, covering the portion of the text. You might find that useful, or maybe you want to click and drag because you want the entire screen because you want to do more stuff with the text. Uh, not to say that you can't do more stuff with the text. The lulls. Okay, Minecraft 1.2 for the lulls right here. So I've got this right here, and you got this open space. Uh, it really depends, I guess, on how you want to organize your text. If you want to be more minimalistic, then you'll probably just want to do... Uh, uh, you might just want to do the text that you only need. And then you can click, you can drag it, you can move it around. But when you click, drag, and move around the text, the position is not moving. So when you, when you revert to the original position, it does not start at the original position. So I have to kind of like go back a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna delete that. And I'm gonna start a new text right here. Minecraft tutorial 1.2, okay? And then I'm gonna manually just place it in the center of the screen. And I kind of have to eyeball this a little bit. But then if I wanna use the position, oh, look at that. It, it moves just like a clip. It's perfect actually. Uh, and you can go back here and uh, you can move it up and down you can make the text you can zoom in on the text but clearly um, the text diminishes in quality when you zoom maybe you want that maybe you don't want that uh, but you can do like cool little things like have your text pop out like this so uh, let's say that I want the text to be tiny but then I want it to grow boom boom it's like that so then when you see it in action wait wait what okay that was too fast actually okay what why is it not I need to you know what I don't I don't get what's going on there um, let's see if I fixed it huh I didn't fix it. Okay, I don't know what's going on here, but normally you're able to just like scale it to the point of like making it uh, increase in size like that. And I don't know why it's not 
working. Again, maybe it's just a thing with the text. I don't really mess around with the text all that much anyway. Um, ah, oh, you know what? I, oh, okay. Is this, oh, 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 I figured it out. I figured it out. Okay, so it was under, I was doing the change under video. That's why uh, nothing was changing. But uh, what I needed to do was I needed to do it under transform under text. So what I had to do is I had to click the arrow right here and then reveal more of the text information and then go to scale. A ah, boom. A uh, boom. Wow, it's already fixed. Look at that. Uh, but I will I will scale this up. Oh, that's cut off actually. Is that a mask? That might be a mask. Okay, so I messed something up over here. But we, we achieved the desired effect one way or the other. Uh, you can also rotate your text if you want. Maybe you want it looking like this. Maybe you want it coming in right here, like old school Windows Movie Maker style. Um, you can definitely do that. If you want to change the rotation, uh, you can do that too. So I will place the keyframe there, and then I revert it to the original point, and boom! Look at that! Oh, snap! And then I'm going to change it in the other direction, so you can have it like swing that way. Uh, this is all this is also like really good if you want to do the head thing where people like turn their heads a little bit and you want to like put someone's head over like a clip of a head uh and just have your head follow their head like i could do the same thing with tyler one if i wanted if i wanted to like change the rotation i could do that but i'm not going to uh it's pretty simple enough uh yeah, rotation is a pretty basic uh, change that you can make. Okay, but let's say that this green screen is over that avatar background. Well, gee, I can't see that text very well because it's white uh, or because it's black. It's a black text on a colored background so what i want to do uh add a stroke you can add a stroke and then i what i always do is i have a black stroke with white text and uh you can't see the stroke right now because it's too small but you can click and drag it and you can make it bigger so let's say that I want my text to be that size. Boom. Guess what? Now you have now you have text that's easily readable because it has this nice stroke on it. It's beautiful. Uh, but maybe you don't want the stroke. You can uncheck it. Uh, boom. It, you can turn it on and off at any point. So I'm going to uncheck that. I'm going to turn on shadow. Uh, let's let's show the shadowed text uh, and then the shadow text automatically has an opacity so maybe I want to like crank it all the way up to a hundred the it like fades in and fades out essentially you can change the degree of the shadow by uh, rotating this right here and you can change like the how how far away the shadow is maybe you want a cool 3d effect and you want to have a little bit of a shadow on your text boom look at that look at that look at that 3d text oh my god that is so beautiful and then you can also have a background here so if you want just like a, 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 a if you just want a background instead of the text uh you can you can have like a background that's like por partially partially uh, diluted or you can just have the full thing uh, yeah and you can change the color maybe you don't like that gray maybe you want it to be red oh snap it's red look at that 
But notice how the background is not covered in the shadow. The stroke was, but not the background. Interesting. Fascinating. You could also make the background bigger if you want, if you want it to take up more space. If you want your thing to look more like, I don't know, an in-game button or something, I can see that being impactful. But uh, yeah, usually I just stick with the fill and the stroke and I don't normally bother with background and shadow. But that's just personal preference. Some people prefer to like use shadow as like a replacement or an alternative to stroke. Uh, you can change the fill color. Maybe I want it to be a cool blue text. Boom! We got a cool blue text and I'll change up the stroke and make it like a nice green. Whoa, look at that shit. Whoa, my eyes are bleeding. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's uh, one of the things that you can do with text. Uh, you can also change the font. Uh, let me change the font. Okay, so you can pick like any font that you want and at the top are like recently used fonts. So uh, if I want, I use this one for like my avatar video more recently. You can like download custom fonts to your computer. Uh, you can go on like dafont.net I think is the website. Um, uh, where was my, uh, I had like a specific font installed that was like very ooh persona styled earwig factory earwig factory was like uh that's like the font that i use to make all my persona thumbnails so uh you can you can use that essentially <laughs> and you can just change up the font however you like that way um but maybe i don't want earwig factory Maybe I want uh, something with a few more options. Uh, let me go over to Roboto. That was a font that I used that I recently really like. Uh, it's automatically on thin, but you can change it to light. You can change it to italic. You can change it to medium. You can change it to bold. You can change it to black, uh, bold italic. You can, you can really mess around with a font like this where it has a lot of options. I like, I like the light italic, so I'll stick with that. And then you can also increase the... Is this your font size? I think it is. I think this is your font size. So uh, keep in mind that this is the font size for the entire thing. So if you want to do... Uh, a fancy schmancy uh, thing look at that the text is cut off so you probably uh, want to be careful about modifying the size of your text uh, I think if I remove the scale effects Huh. Nope. It's still cut off right here. And I'm not sure why. But it's just something to keep in mind. I think if I started off uh, with some new text. Uh... Oh, look at that. It kept my original text settings from earlier. So you also want to keep that in mind too, that like your default text will change to like whatever you previously used. I find this very helpful um, because I usually do want to stay consistent within my font sizes. And then let's try to make it bigger. Can we make that text bigger, please? Uh, sometimes I find that I have to, if I want to make the text bigger, I have to like actually, uh, Highlight it on screen. And then, uh, yeah, and then I can do this uh, cool thing right here with the position because I just got an effect idea. 
and I'm just gonna have it like kind of like scroll through this way like that whoa uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this thing where uh, it's just uh, moving from one side to the other oh look at that look at that you had minecraft tutorial 1.3 presented to you with the scroll on screen and off screen it's beautiful I love that actually so uh, I think that's pretty much it uh, again you can change the opacity if you want on the text maybe you want the text to be like partially faded out but I don't uh, so here we go it's only game. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! And uh, there you have uh, my intro to my new Minecraft tutorial. <laughs> I hope <laughs> I hope that you have found it uh, very helpful. Uh, and it was very very. Uh, I've uh, learned so much. Yeah. Uh, I I feel like that's pretty much it. Like I feel like I feel like I gave you the all the information that I can think of oh 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 actually that's not true that's not true uh here's one other thing that you uh, want to do okay I'm gonna throw in another clip uh okay uh there we go so this is just so I had like an odd number of clips because I needed to right click on uh this box uh so uh if you right click on this box right here and then you go to new item you can import a, a just like an original thing right here so like color mat uh, if you go to color mat uh, look it's asking for the video settings is right now it's at like a 720p type of thing so uh, let's say that I want a different colored background I can get a different colored background implemented is a uh, green this is green this is a green color right here look at that the entire background is green but that's a property you have to like is it's just like any other picture so you can uh you can mess with it too uh what i like to do for like my outro a lot of the times is i like to have it drop down so uh, we are gonna have it drop down by uh, using the keyframes and then boom look at that it's like it's like a nice pair of curtains and you can even uh, you can even like apply it over here and then you can see it like you can you can see that I just made like a manual transition right here all because of that beautiful color mat that I added uh, and I'm sure that there's other things that you can add uh, so let me click on new bin okay new bin actually didn't do much for me it was like a folder this is a folder the folder that you can use to organize stuff so if you want to throw stuff in here uh, like maybe it's for scene one or something and then if you want to get in there boom then you have all your stuff right here in this folder uh maybe i want the the 40 pizzas for 30 days guy to come up uh mr papa john himself so then i can uh, go over here and then i can go over there okay i don't actually want that to happen right away uh, and I, I want I want to add like a little bit of a fade. Okay, let's play what I got now. I've had over forty pizzas in the last thirty days, and that was just like a quick transition. That was like a quick transition. And it looks like a somewhat professional video. Like, 
You did that cool thing. You did that. You did the thing. And then I'm just gonna have it like cut to black right here. But look at that. Like you did the. You did the lowering presentation, and then you got the fade right up here. I mean, if you want, if you want the full, if you want to do like what Game Grumps does, you can you can have that background at the lower end right here, and then you have the video at almost full size, but not at quite full size. I've had over forty pizzas in the last thirty days. Or, uh, maybe you don't care about that. Maybe you don't care about that transition and you want to get rid of that, get rid of that. And you just want a jump cut right here. I've had over 40 pizzas. You can do that too. So, uh, yeah, uh, this was actually something that was like really important to me, uh, because like, uh, in importing color mats is uh actually extremely helpful for me uh i'm sure that there's other things that you can do too if you want to implement just black video by itself boom boom is it's just the color black that's it that's it uh or if you want to implement something else you can do that too universal counting leader I'm not sure what this is. Is that a timer? No! It's one of those classic... Uh, it's one of those... In the last 30 days. It's one of these classic things right here. Look at that! It doesn't come with any sound effects, but you got the video right here. Oh! Oh! You do have a sound effect right here. Oh! I've never actually used that before. I just pulled that out randomly. Uh, so that might be w worth looking into. Premiere has a few individual items that you might want to implement, and they're pretty cool. What what the heck are the HD bar? Oh, it's this thing. You can you can add that if you want. Oh, you know what? I might want to use that. I might want to use that. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm I'm just I'm just kind of like looking through right now, seeing what's available. Okay, nope. I don't know what offline file is for. Uh, uh, transparent video. What the heck is that? It's a transparent video. If you, I guess, if you want an empty transparent video, you can. Uh, you can you can add that. Again, it's like right click and then you go to new item. Uh, ooh, captions. Captions. Let me throw some captions up here. I, I don't know how to add captions. I thought I could just click and drag it like anything else, but it doesn't seem like I can. But you might be able to do something with captions in Premiere like that too. Uh, so that's that's a thing. Uh, the, the bars. Okay, that's bars and tone. But you also got uh, HD bars and tone, and I don't know the difference. They look pretty similar to me. I'm not, not sure what that is. You can duplicate it if you want to. So if you want like two separate things in there, boom. Guess what? Now I have two separate HD bars and tone. That's that's pretty freaky. Uh. I guess that's pretty much it. Um, the hand tool can be like, you can just use that to like grab things and like move them on screen and like change them. Uh, the type tool, obviously we've shown the pen tool uh, you can use to like create a shape out of nothing if you want. Uh, and it's just like an empty shape. That's all it is. Uh, but I almost never use that. Uh, yeah, so usually I uh, pretty much just use like the razor tool and the text tool and the selection tool and that's pretty much it. Uh, that's actually like everything that I use. So uh, yeah, uh, any questions?
not really i think you i think you explained all that very very well and very clearly so excellent i think i've just about got the gist of it yeah i mean that's pretty much everything that i use i think i'll uh upload this video to the cake liker channel for anyone that wants to learn premiere uh i don't even know how long of a recording this was oh, it was an hour long that's not too bad <laughs> it's an hour i feel like you know if you want to learn premiere in an hour that's a pretty good deal uh and yeah like that's pretty much it so again uh, be very wary of like putting stuff in v1 and a1 if you're going to be doing a lot of copying and pasting of footage oh uh you can also mute tracks so if you're trying to listen to a specific track but you don't want to like remove it or get rid of the footage you can just mute that track so you don't want to hear tyler one scream you just want to hear like okay how long is the background music and then when you unmute it There you go. <laughs> uh, I guess you can also voice over record in here. I don't really mess with that all that much. I usually just import from like Audacity if I'm doing a recording. Let me let me test this. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, oh, hey, 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 hey. Oh, shit. Okay, so yeah, it just recorded me right here uh, so if i want myself in there boom hey hey it's only, it's only oh. Oh. hey now obviously there was like a lot of background noise so i would implement the yes the denoise and i probably do it a couple of times all right that's two denoises right there. Hey, hey, it's only, it's only good. Oh. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so yeah, you can just have an instant <laughs> recording thrown in there. Um, solo track is if you only want to hear. Hey, hey. Oh, hey. Hey. You know what? I might actually start using the in voiceover record because it's just so convenient if you want to like make note that like okay so this thing happened in here and i'm already in editing and i don't feel like going into audacity to do a separate recording bam you got that like right there it's beautiful uh toggle track lock so if you don't want to accidentally move anything boom it's perfect look at that look at that Oh shit, you see how those clips are supposed to be connected? Well, guess what? It gives you this little meter thing and tells you, hey, uh, they're out of sync. Uh, you might want to move them back. And it tells you like how much out of sync they're by. It only happens if they're linked though. So uh, those are uh, things to keep in mind. Uh, you can also do the thing visually where you get rid of the the thing on screen so you can see what's behind it uh so that's that's another beautiful thing i think i think i've covered everything now i've even covered a few things that i don't normally work with so i'd say uh i'd say that is uh pretty cool oh you can also do presets uh for footage so if i want that uh papa john footage to have something that i previously presetted uh wait can i create a pre i i haven't messed with presets in a long time so i don't exactly remember how to save a preset but if you want to import a preset like i've got pi key i don't remember what that was for oh it was like a i think it was like a keyframe or something that was automatically saved uh okay let's try it. ep zoomed in or EP small. Ah. Yeah, okay. So the small, I think, is just if I wanted to like instantly have something to a corner. Yeah, that's. I probably did that for like a reaction video or something. Uh, battle game audio. What the hell is this right here? I've had over 40 pizza. Okay. And you can also have audio presets right here. I've had over 40 pizza. 
and it kind of just like it just like carries over previous effects and you're essentially like dragging and dropping the specific combination of effects that you wanted okay uh oh ooh, 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 that's right you can speed up footage and slow down footage uh so speed and duration maybe i want it to go 50 percent slower guess what oh so it automatically like does carry over the uh the voice but if you want to maintain audio pitch you can do that too i've had over 40 so you just have to have uh maintain audio pitch checked uh you can change the speed to like 25 percent you can do 125 percent uh if you want it to be faster i've had over 40 pizzas in the last 30 days and I'm sure that there's also like pitch shifting that you can do in here. Uh, I haven't really messed with pitch shifting all that much. I mean, obviously it automatically pitch shifts uh, when you mess with the speed and duration. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, let, let's, let's uh, export this video. So what you want to do is you want to go to file, you want to go to export, you go to media, And then I can show you my settings right here. So uh, it has like automatic stuff. So, okay, H264 is what I do for like everything because it exports it as a .mp4 file. So H264 is like perfect for me. But if you wanna just export an mp3 or a GIF, you can do that too, an animated GIF. If you just wanna make an animated GIF in Premiere, you can export like that. Uh, you can export stuff uh, as it would be like best for Facebook or best for Vimeo or best for YouTube or best for Twitter. So let's say that I'm doing a very quick uh, uh, Twitter clip. Actually, that. Oh. Okay. If I want, if I want a Twitter clip, I'm gonna wanna. I'm gonna want to change the scale back to normal uh, and probably like I'm gonna want to centralize it and I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna change this to right here Ooh. yes beautiful 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 okay now this is now this is more of like a sequence of a video that i would actually make uh so uh let's say that i'm trying to make something for twitter uh so i go to preset and instead of match source what i want to do is i want to go to twitter and i want it to export at 720p hd <clears throat> so uh yeah uh, I've got my output name and it's like automatically gonna save to my videos folder I can change the frame rate if I want if I wanted to operate at 60 FPS. I can do that uh, But I think 2997 is typically what you want to use for like a good 30 frames per second video uh, And if I queue it if you have Adobe media encoder automatically if you have it already if you have Adobe media encoder installed sometimes it fixes with like exporting problems You might have like exporting issues coming up. So I'm gonna export this shit right here uh, Look at that. It's beautiful. It's beautiful and that was actually a really fast render But then again, it's only like a 10 second video or 12 second video. So yeah uh, that is how you do editing in Premiere. I assume that you have no other questions. Nope, nothing at all. Everything was, again, everything was very clear, concise. I've learned a lot. I'm excited to start practicing with the new knowledge I have. Yes! Yes, yeah. I highly recommend. Uh, there are so many other things that you can do that I didn't even get into. I, oh, shit. Uh...
Can I do like the Gaussian blur? Is that a... Uh, you know what? No, no, no. I'm not even going to mess with blurs right now. Uh, because I haven't... Yeah, you can blur things. Ga Gaussian blur is my favorite blur. Gaussian blur is the best blur. I'm, I'm just saying that right now. Uh, Gaussian blur does so many amazing things for you. Uh, look at that shit! Look at that shit! It's beautiful! <laughs> If you want like a, if you want like a nice looking background that the pros do, then then uh you just use Gaussian blur. So let's say that I want this background to be blurred. I I use Gaussian blur and then I do the thing. Ah, that's so cool. That's so cool. I get excited though over Gaussian blur. It's it it looks so professional. If I want, uh, I'm, I'm looking for like some four by three footage right here. Ah, beautiful. Uh, so actually, I'm going to import uh, another four by three clip real quick, just so I can show you a thing that I like to do. Okay, so uh, here is a clip of uh, steamed hams. Okay, you got steamed hams right here, right? And now, boom, four by three, beautiful. But what if you want to make it look fancy? Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this shit because I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to copy and paste the steam tams right here. And then look at this shit. Uh, once I lined it up, actually, yeah, it's the same shit. Okay, so uh, we've got the same video right here, right? Right? But... Uh, what happens when I disguise my when I disguise fast food as my cooking? <laughs> so, oh wait, that that was the outside. Okay. Uh, when I disguise fast food as my cooking, look at this shit. Okay. So here it doesn't look very good, but when you add the Gaussian blur onto that first layer in the background. Go, look at that shit oh my god you can do the fancy thing that professional editors have done for like the longest time uh so if you wanna if you want your shit to look like i don't know a fucking video from vice look at that it's beautiful it's beautiful i love it i love it it does it does the thing it probably takes you a little bit longer to render and you should also uh, you should also delete one of the audio tracks so that way you don't have a, a, a destroy in your ears. But look at that! And it looks so cool! It's great! Okay, that is everything. I, um, I refuse to do any more. If you want to learn more, please uh, purchase the Professional Senpai Academy course for only 500 million dollars. Thank you. <laughs> well, I know what I'm investing in this week. That's for sure. Only, it's only game. <laughs> I've had over 40 pizzas in the last 30 days.